So, hello, welcome to my tutorial on substitution reactions of alkenes. So, we're going to talk about radical substitution and it's when covalent bonds are broken by homoelectric fission to form radicals with an unpaired electron. And a hydrogen atom in the alkane is substitution, substituted by a halogen atom. And we're going to use this example today CH4 plus Cl2 equals CH3Cl plus HCl. So step one is the initiation step. It's Cl to Cl breaking the covalent bond to form two. So covalent bonds are broken by homoelectric fission to form radicals of an unpaired electron. And a hydrogen atom is in the alkane is substituted by a halogen atom. The halogens bromide, bromine and iodide also react with alkanes in a similar way. So, in the initiation stage, the CLCL bond in a chlorine molecule is broken by homoelectric fission, forming two chlorine radicals. Ultraviolet radiation provides the energy for the bond fission. So, after the initiation reaction, the reaction can continue without the need for further energy or more radicals. So, the chlorine radicals attack the methane in the second reaction stage. So, step two is propagation. So, propagation has two steps. The first propagation step, the B frame reacts with a chlorine radical. A single carbon hydrogen bond is broken by homoelectric fission, and this forms a B five radical, CH3. And hydrogen chloride, HCl, is also formed. In the second propagation step, the B five radical reacts with a chlorine molecule. The original organic carbon product, chloride, methane, CH3Cl, is formed together with a further chlorine radical. And CH4 plus Cl makes CH3 dot plus HCl. And the second propagation step is CH3 dot plus Cl2, making CH3 Cl plus Cl dot. So it's the two repeated steps in radical substitution that build up the products in the chain reaction. So and finally, it's termination. So Cl plus Cl dot makes Cl2 and CH3 dot plus CH3 dot equals C2H6 and CH3 dot plus Cl dot is CH3Cl and it removes the this, this step removes the radicals and the propagation stage cycles through many many times um, so give it a little bit of a thing to read and we'll look at the definition. Termination is the step at the end of a radical substitution when two radicals combine to form a molecule. So we move on to the next page and what are alkenes? So the nature of the double bond. The carbon carbon double bond is made up from two parts, a sigma bond and a pi bond. Pi delta bonds are also present in alkanes. A delta bond is formed directly between two carbon atoms by the overlap of orbitals. Each carbon atom contributes one electron to the electron pair in the delta bond. A pi bond is formed above and below the plane of carbon atoms by a sideways overlap of the p orbitals. Each carbon atom contributes to one electron from a p orbital to the electron pair of the pi bond. So if you look here, here are your two delta bonds. For each carbon there is also always two ones. So when they overlap they form a pi bond. And uh, this pi bond is less stable than this one. And we'll find out why in a bit. So the pi bond fixes the carbon atoms in position at either end of the double bond. This prevents any rotation of the bond. In alkenes each carbon involved in the double bond uses three of its electrons in the formation of three delta bonds and uses one of its electrons in the formation of a pi bond. So, a pi bond is the reactive part of a double, double bond formed above and below the plane of bonded atoms by sideways overlap of the p orbitals. Um, we look at carotene now, it's a very, very long alkene and it's got two cyclic ends. So, cyclic alkenes are closed rings of carbon atoms containing one or more double bonds. The most common cyclic alkene is cyclohexene. Cyclic 
alkenes do not follow the same general formula as aliphat aliphatic alkenes. So carotene down there is used by the body to make vitamin A, and the carotene molecule is 11 double bonds on both cyclic and straight chain sections. And carotene's name ends in ene to indicate the presence of a double bond. So it has lots and lots of double bonds. Just look at the ball. It's shocking. Um, so now we'll move on to the reactions of alkenes. So they, these take part in addition reactions. If we look here, it forms unsaturated alkene. Alkene with product A to B forms a saturated product. This is because of the reactivity of the carbon carbon double bond. So, in an alkane, the single bond between two carbon atoms is the delta bond, and this overlaps to form a pi bond, as we spoke about earlier on. And bond enthalpy is just the measurement of chemical energy stored in a chemical bond. and Pi bonds are weaker than delta bonds, so when the alkene reacts, the pi bond breaks and the delta bonds remain intact. So delta bonds are forming over the the um, the atom like this. Excuse my or my rubbish orbital drawing, and this is the pi bonds here. So when they break, this more stable product forms. Now, if we move back and look at the addition of hydrogen now, so a mixture of hydrogen gas and gaseous alkenes is passed over a catalyst of nickel at a temperature of exactly 150 degrees. And the hydrogen adds across the double bond and the alkane is formed. The reaction is sometimes known as hydrogenation and is an example of reduction. So, if we look here, it forms a saturated ethane molecule and the addition of halogens is when this happens so uh, we, uh, we add a halogen to ethe ethene and it forms 1,2-dichloroethane now this breaks, breaks the bond and it forms this we'll find out more why how it happens in a bit so if we look at the halogenation of propene with bromine this same thing happens again, only 1,2-dibromopropane di forms and the CH3 chain is just to simplify the structure so it can be seen in that way. Um, so this is the, the bromine test for unsaturation and if you look on the right hand side there's an aqueous layer and this indicates that there is an organic compound present. If there's no double bond present in the bromine does not decolorize, it just stays orange. Um, so, go to the next page. The addition of hydrogen halides, further addition reactions of alkane, alkenes now. So, if we look at hydrogen bromide and ethene, this makes bromoethane. And the addition of steam or gaseous water plus. In the presence of H plus ions or H3PO4 there, so if I write H plus, H plus, oh, won't let me do it. So this makes ethanol. H and the OH are bonded to two separate carbon atoms. And for unsymmetrical al alkenes, they take part in addition reactions too, so they form a mixture of organic products. Propene reacts in the same way with hydrogen bromide as shown in figure 3, and more one organic product is formed than the other. In this case, the major product is 2 bromopropane, and the minor one is 1 bromopropane. So, two, two products can form major product is this one, minor product is this one. Two very different compounds, but this one is the, the better one. Now electrophilic addition is when the density of pi electrons in the double bond is high and electrophiles are attracted to the pi electrons. So this is called electrophilic addition.
and the electron pair and the pi bond is attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen atom in hydrogen bromide here. This causes the double bond to break, and a new bond forms between one of the carbon atoms and the hydrogen atom. The HBr bond breaks by heteroelectric TO lytic fission, with the electron pair going to bromine. A bromide ion, Br minus, and a carbocation are formed. So if we look at the diagram below, this curly arrow represents the movement of one pair of electrons. So two electrons are moving every time. So this pair moves to the slightly delta plus side, and this moves to the, the, the bromine delta negative side, making a bromide ion and a carbocation, with one the H atoms bonding to the molecule. Carbocation is represented by A plus in a circle. This is the second stage where the, bro the bromide ion attacks the electro electron deficient carbocation. When I say electron deficient, I mean that bromine can bond to another H at or bromine. So it's going to bro bond to bromine first and then the two hydrogen atoms shift around so two hydrogen atoms shift around there and the bromine bonds to there as carbon can only bond to four things so bromine can bond to this one quite easily as it is an electrophile so this is basically the a summary of what curly arrows are and we look at alkenes and bromine now. We look at the addition of bromine. Same thing again. I'll let you read this. And if you look at this particular picture, then this happens. And then if you look at our second stage, this happens. And this is the heteroelectric fission of the bromine molecule. But what if they have more than one double bond? All you have to do is get three H2 molecules in order to cancel out each one of the double bonds to make them saturated. So if you can make them saturated without a catalyst, it's very, very useful. And this is what this particular compound can do. So if you have excess hydrogen, you can cancel out any double bond you like with unsaturated compounds. So this flow chart I think would be quite helpful in your version. Um, if you can pause the video and copy it down then uh, if you don't have the textbook it will be quite useful but if you do then cover it up, scribble it down on the piece of paper until you remember it like it was the back of your hand. Um, so we'll now move on to the industrial importance of alkenes and margarine. Why am I talking about margarine? Because it is an unsaturated compound and you can make it into a polymer chain and this is how the synthetic fats was born. So I'll let you add the, um, I'll just let you a look. So it uses the same process as we looked at before, hydrogenation. This is just an applied process. So hydrogenation here is what we're looking at. And these are the definitions. A polymer is a long molecular chain built up from monomer units. And a monomer, monomer is a small molecule that combines with many other monomers to form a polymer. In addition, polymerization is the process in which unsaturated alkene molecules add on to a growing polymer chain one at a time to form a very long saturated molecular chain, or the addition polymer. So this is basically what happens. So we have lots and lots of ethene molecules, and we polymerize them. We make polyethene. Now it has brackets there because this is how it was originally derived using ethene molecules. But you have, when the double bonds are removed by excess hydrogen, then this is what happens. It makes a very long chain hydrocarbon. And let me read this now. 
and that's it for this tutorial. 